before in the past, <laughs> where they put something on a t-shirt and actually didn't necessarily have the rights for it. So how, how do you guys work with merch and, and merchandise? Sure, I mean merchandise on a new revenue stream is I think merchandise, music merchandise is a $300 million a year business. So uh, Lyric Fine has always been very much about having fully licensed like uh, lyrics and properly reported and the reason why Google and Amazon and these huge companies work with us is because we are we can fully fully licensed. Um, uh, we, we noticed a while ago on Etsy and a lot of the kind of more creative sites there's a ton of people making their own uh, lyric merchandise because obviously if you leave a, a gap in the market as, as streaming pirate streaming show, the, the, the you know the market will fill it. So we thought, why don't we use our proper license model to make a kind of merch platform? And, and we, we've done that in, in a Lyric Merch, which is, was launched um, earlier this year. So that's basically, there's a, if you go on, on lyricmerch.com, you can see there's a bunch of like pre-made uh, products around like Drake, say the single or whatever the latest hits are, and Sheeran, etc. But the cool thing is you can also select a song that means something to you, um, pull some lyrics out of it, and actually sort of design and create your own sort of print-on-demand fully licensed uh, product. So that's really a, a really great uh, area that is really growing really strongly. Uh, and yeah, we, we see that another way to be able to create value for rights holders uh, of a fully licensed product. And t-shirts and slogans go back probably to the history of the, of the, the t-shirt itself. And, uh, and music, you know, obviously probably one of the, you know, people love expressing themselves through music. So yeah, we think uh, lyric merchandising is going to be a real strong piece of the music merchandise market. And um, do you, I think all of us will kind of say the same on this, but do you think that education, educating the end users, your customers, about why they need to license music, do you think that's a big part of what the music industry needs to do as a whole? Uh, teach people that copyright exists and you can't just have music for free all the time? Yeah, definitely, but I think it's simplifying it in general for your average person, which is the, the difficult bit. Because um, it is so complicated in general. Like uh, PPL and PRS, they used to have two different licenses yeah. for venues, and now they've recently merged into one company and it's one license, and that makes way more sense for everyone who owns a venue or a business here. Because uh, explaining that there's two different sides of music to yeah. your average person, it's it's not a quick exactly. conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think yeah, definitely educating people helps so much. I don't think there is a there is a currently a, a, like a resource that I can find if you were an emerging artist, which would uh, help you understand where you could license your your uh, you know your product. So I think that really it's currently up to the artist to work hard, go to the PRIs, the collection societies, they'll list companies, find a mentor, turn up a. Um, you know, conferences such as this, learn, be open to new ideas. I think that's that's basically where, where you start. Because there isn't a list of, you know, how to make money as yeah. an emerging artist. It does not exist. Yeah. You need to hustle. Yeah, there's also not a list of how do I license music, yeah. you know? And and copyright information is often missing or hard to find. I mean, there's nothing on here that makes wrong, yeah. You know, so um, I think it's, it's important on both sides to be educating the, the end user who's ultimately licensing the music, but also the artists who are wanting to get the music out there and be licensed. Um, so it's, it's quite a 